Washington and Muskie Kathy? Is that a mm -hmm. association? Woma. Everybody know Woma, Kathy? Yeah. Is that Kathy or the K? Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And an IE. And an IE. And there's a link, it's my understanding, of all of the presentations and PowerPoints. Mm -hmm. And they'll be out there on that link. <coughs> countries are already using this to code. So finding out how to do it, the UK wouldn't help us a bit. Oh, we have plans so from there. They're on the yeah. website. But it's pretty much what, the, you know, what Adima has put out. So. I deserve it. Yeah. Because it's not the good sign, though. It is the United States the first country with all these private industries in contrast with all these people up here who are all national uh -huh. health. Are we the first country that's coming on board that are adopting ICD-10, uh, which would paint us a good picture, not the full picture of the Oh, yeah. I, it's not my opinion. I don't think uh, it's a poor picture. Well, how, well, how, you, how you describe it? Yeah, like, it's are, just... Are we the first one to come on, first country, country to come on board with ICD-10, who is private care uh, insurance? Well, well, there are private there carriers are private in, care. in other countries. Yeah. But, yes, you know, like yeah. United Kingdom and Germany yeah. and... Yeah, and you know, about most of the others, but Thailand and Korea just health. made the switch here, so they just flipped the switch. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's costly. It's costly for insurance plans, costly for, you know, for systems to change. And so I think that, you know, we've just postponed it. It hasn't been a need to do it. And some would argue there's no need now, except that IC9 is going away. They're not going to support it. So we have to move to something. The reasoning behind it was that for statistical reporting, if you read it, that it, it did not have the specificity that we needed for disease management and that type of thing. Any other Jimmy, questions? It, just at the risk of sounding naive, what does with, M, with CC or MCC mean with, when you go to the codes? For the three digit terminal codes? With CC? With MCC or CC? Are you on a website? I'm on the ICD10data.com. Okay. And it, when you when you look up the code, yeah. it, uh, it gives you a choice. You say, uh, uh, open it up all the way here. Uh, for example, it says, well, that one does. Oh, yeah, it says, for example, uh, when I look up for SMAG dysfunction, it has M9902.02 is part of the group, and 551 is was with MCC and 552 was without MCC. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to look at that. Uh, complexity of comorbid conditions. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I can't think of what the acronym is. Uh, not chief complaint. CC wouldn't be chief complaint. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But M, Clinical what's correlation? M mean? Or? No. So the CC is comorbid condition? Well, there's, there's other reporting that have M's in front of them in the <laughs> index. So MCC. And you're saying that most of these are seven-digit oh, numerals? Mm -hmm. Here's your MCC list. So oh, I'll just kind of, pardon me? And yeah, seven there's, th there's three, four, five, six, seven. Most of them are seven. Um, because, I mean, I just looked under, say, dislocation, sprain, and strain of joints and ligaments of lumbar spine, and they just seem to be like S33.0. Look up diabetes. Major, okay, major CC. Yeah. Will be chief complaint, actually. Yeah. No? So the CCMCC, so these are the chronic condition illness. Oh, chronic condition? Major, major yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Since it allowed with the principal diagnosis in the, yeah, no exclusion is given to the collection of diagnosis codes when used the does principal. There's a cut. These are for only for patients discharged alive, so it's more hospital claims. Oh, those are for the hospital. Major it's another oh, major it's a, complications it, comorbidity or complications. Yeah, comorbidity. and it's a it's an appendix in the ICD-10. So if somebody fell and they had a contusion, mm -hmm. and, they and then 
I had somatic dysfunction as a complication of that, then you could list that as, as with the CC. Yeah, or their major complication is they were on, say, anticoagulants, and so they had a bleed, okay. that type right. of thing. And who draws the line in the sand of what it is and what it isn't? Is well, we never categorize to these. We submit the diagnosis, then they categorize them. Who's they? Oh, the health plan, Medicare, 3 so what, what if we're doing the coding ourselves? Well, you are doing it. But, but then they but, do it. But they take, for instance, say you did somatic, somatic dysfunction on a person who is on high risk medication, right. who has CHF, who has all of these other things. Mm -hmm. So it, then. They would take all those diagnoses and they run it through a grouper and they would put that patient in that major condition category. category. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's pretty complicated. You can only do them with groupers that you have to buy. So, I mean, it's not something you map yourself. It's something that's got an algorithm that runs. When you have these four together, it turns into this MCC. And then that MCC is used for statistical reasons. So, wow. I can't just write this down and turn it into Medicare. Yeah. Well, you can, and they're going to turn it into that. And they'll, and they'll, they'll yeah. double check As long my as work, you use an ICD-10 code, whether you're sending it paper or you're sending it through an electronic format, they're going to take that ICD-10 and they're going to do something with it. Okay. They're going to pay you. They're going to do some statistical things. Uh, for instance, for all the Medicare enrollment that we get, uh, through managed care plans, they take all of their claims, whether they're pharmacy, the ER, whatever, they take all the diagnoses off of them, and then when we come into a plan, we have a risk score that's assigned to us as an individual. So part of it is age, part of it is sex, and then the other part, the only part that physicians control or any provider that is seeing them is the um, HCC, the Hierarchical Chronic Condition Category. So that is my risk score based on the diseases I have. Okay. So if I have HIV, if I'm severely depressed, if I have CHF, if I have COPD, that risk score on me is going to be sky high. So that's generated by prior claims. Yep. And they take them all in. Also, there is a risk adjuster if you are a Medicaid patient that's converted. There's some risk that's um, added to that as well. Because it's thought that you have not had preventive care or the kind of care that you should have had while you were covered under um, a Medicaid program if you're an adult. So, pretty complicated. So if you have patients with one of those top 20 diagnoses, it, it behooves us to use that, use that diagnosis. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Not only does it behoove you, but you're going to partner with health plans who get paid a premium from Medicare that is a higher premium to take care of those patients. Is there a listing of those, uh, those common ones? Or? Oh, yeah. You just have to go out there and say HCC coding. <coughs> yeah, we say the top five plus six. Uh, it's really interesting, but artificial openings. I don't know how many of you code your patients who have artificial opening um, for either elimination or feeding. So you have somebody that's got a colostomy. That pays the health plan annually for that to insure that patient. Medicare pays them $8,000 more a year on top of the $800 per member per month that they get because it's a predictive model that says that person with that artificial opening is going to need more supplies, has a higher risk of infection and complications, and so it's going to cost you more to take care of them. That's what they're passing on to physicians. Does that, does that include pick lines and that as well too? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things oh that are goodness. on there. And it's interesting because the reverse of that is where they are really you know, hammering down on physicians and saying, you know, you coded this person with cancer. They have a history of cancer. So we improperly were paid extra money because you said they had cancer. We have to give that back to Medicare. So that's the CDI, this uh, documentation and coding improvement mm -hmm. that, that the country is looking for. So when they have to pay them back, are they going to come to physicians and take money back from physicians? Not right now, but if you, if you, in the future you start doing contracts with insurance company where it is based on the patient severity and it's based on your do documentation and diagnosis coding and you're um, getting a share of that because your panel, you know, you've got this 50 people that are sicker, then yes, they would take that back or it'll be reconciled out of what you would expect. So even, even though we're only getting paid specifically on the top to four diagnoses, if we report all these other diagnoses, then that will stratify the patient 
for future yeah, claims. Yeah, one right. thing you have to remember is that you have to code them once a year for this payment. It's not every time they come in. But okay. you have to. This is where the annual well visits are coming from. See those patients once a year and address all their chronic problems. And you can put everything on it. it then. Yep. Yeah. Even if it's stable, no problem. And then that'll, that'll stratify them for the next 12 months. Yeah, because the, you know, Medicare is trying to get, trying to figure out what is this population of people going to cost me, and I can only know what it's going to cost me if I know how sick they are. Oh. So, and it's easy then too under especially population management program where you're saying I got to focus on these sick people sure. keep them out of the hospital check in with them if I can keep them well I can reduce costs that type of thing and that's happening right now with ICD-9 oh yeah happening right now with ICD-9 yeah. they say they say I don't say but they say the specificity of ICD-10 will really help them with that so okay so my next um, talk is on uh, Navigating Medicare contracts, any kind of contract, for instance, where you can negotiate. Uh, you know, how many of you do a lot of contracting or contract with insurance plans? Do you have a process for looking at the contracts when you receive them? Um, I don't. Uh, there's a team of people that, that do. I'm kind of in a larger clinic, and that happens. That's kind of transparent to what I'm doing. Yeah. That usually happens when you're in a larger clinic. They're already doing the run of the analysis. I'm hoping they're running the analysis. Yeah. <laughs> so the objective today are just contracting basics. For any of you that are out there by yourself doing contracting, it's kind of what you should look for, for a con in a contract review. Um, some considerations and you know what those pitfalls can be and avoid them. So I put together the top 10 because I like David Letterman. And also, I think there are top 10 questions that you should ask before signing a contract. I mean, you go into practice, you start seeing people, but nobody ever prepares you for, oh, geez, I got a contract with the payers, and they're bigger and tougher and have a lot more money than I do, and so, you know, what should I think about? Nobody told me what I should look at. Can I, can I just, uh, I, I wanted to tell you something that's happening before you start talking about this. For mental health care, the PPOs where you're in network, in network, out of network, it used to be well, 80 20, now out of network, 60 40. I've been helping patients call around and understand their plans. Now they're putting a one to two thousand dollar deductible on the mental health benefit for out of network providers before they can use their uh, mental health care plan. Yeah. And I think that should be criminal, but. How do you start, you know, I thought, like, how do you, how can that be, and it, can you let me, can yeah. you add something in your talk about how you get around that kind of stupid stuff? So at the end I will, but what you're talking about is uh, plan design. Yeah, what but I'm being forced what? to go into networks to see yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's plan design, and that, yeah. they're doing that on purpose. I know, Yeah. but it doesn't seem like it's right. Yeah. But it's kind of like a backlash from the law when they started categorizing mental health as regular disease, which they should have always done. So they can't have writers anymore, and they can't limit it, but they just have plans now that have like a specialty copay. And in-network, out-network, yeah. But I've, but I've 